In this video, I'll be talking about how to create subsets in QGIS and especially how those two tools that can do it, how they function, namely how we set filters on layers and how we use selection sets. There are, um, are typically two situations where you want to create a subset. You want to reduce the amount of information on the map. Basically this concept of KISS, keep it simple stupid, you, that we work with in the video on uh, map design. So typically when we create a map, remember that it's not how much information you can put on the map, but how much information the reader can get out of the map that's of importance. So, there's often we want to get rid of not crucial information. The last situation is that you have a large data set, let's say you have gone to a server and got a data set of a whole of Denmark, but you're only just working for Copenhagen. So you want to create a subset or just to make it work quicker or because you want to take this larger data set from the server and put it on your own computer so you can edit it. Remember, typically you are not allowed to edit data on the central server, so you will have to create your own local copy and you might as well just make a subset of the area you want to use rather than make a copy of the whole data set. And as I mentioned a couple of times, there are two tools or two different approaches to doing this. We can use a filter on our data set, which is typically um, what we want to do if we only need some of the data. So if we only, we've got the whole of the country and we only need the data in Copenhagen municipality, then we'll use a filter. The other approach is creating a selection set. Selection sets are typically used if we want to do something special with some of them. If we want to change a attribute of some of them, or we want to create a copy, or we want to do something else specifically with only a subset of our data. We want to have keep the rest of it, but we only want to manipulate, calculate on a subset. And that's situations where we typically use the selection set. Um, layer filtering um, is what is probably what the one that is closest to um, the pure SQL. If you can do it two places, you can uh, right click on a layer and say filter, or you can right click on a layer, go down in this properties, and in the general tab, click on um, the query builder under this. Um, provide feature filters. So those are those two general ways of doing it. The query builder that will result, never mind which way you do it, looks something like this. You will have um, the attributes of your layer here. Yeah. So these are the different attributes of them. You double click an attribute and it is displayed down in this part where we provide our SQL where clause. Okay. So here it says, so I double clicked on municipality code, commune code, and said it has to be equal to 147. 100, municipality code 147 is the municipality of Frederiksberg. If I can't remember which municipalities I have in my data set, I can, when it's selected, press this all over here and it will display all the unique values of that attribute. So I could have click on the 47. And then I could make create a or. So I've got all of those standard things, what we use to equal, less than, greater than, greater, less than or equal, greater than or equal, not equal. So exclamation mark equal is not equal. And then we have the or and the and. The, the, the likes can be used to do subtext strings, so finding street names that start with a, a or things like that. 
This is the wild card, so we, if you want, can be substituted with one or more characters. In is used if you have a list of values, or a set of. Uh, not in is a negative, and not is the negative. So, these are our operators we can use, but typically we'll be using equal lists in them. That ones might come along as we go. So, and you finish it up by creating your valid SQL down here. If you already have a filter, um, you might not see all the attribute of the uh, values of the attribute up here, but if you can click this little tick mark here, this radio button, then it will show you a list of the unfiltered data set. So you can select objects that were filtered out, which sometimes can be useful to do. So that is how it works. Let's um, look at an example in uh, QGIS. So on QGIS, I will browse down to my folder and find this one, which is called Adgangs Adresser, which basically means the address of the street door. It does not include um, the different floors and to the right and left and so on. It just has the door in front of which the ambulance will stop in case of an emergency. So this is all of them. So we have only got one point for each location. So if I just zoom in somewhere, and then uh, use my eye tool and click on an object, it will only return one object. So it won't return one for each floor and each left and right and so on. So there's only one for each street door. If I wanted to say, I've got a moment, I see lots of dots. If I only wanted to see number one of a specific street or each street. So I go in here and use my filter and say house number should be equal to, and I could use a get all here, and then one. Note that it puts it in quotation marks. We have the attribute names in a double quotation and the attribute values in a single quotation. That's because you can see there is also ones with 100A, 100B and so on. Therefore, it's not the house number is not a number, but it is a text and is therefore wrapped in these quotation marks. So I say OK. You can see that what's left now is only number one. So if I click on any of these, it will be number one of this road. This one will be number one of another road. So, on. so I've now filtered out based on um, these individual roads. I, if I zoom out to my complete layer, that I say, okay, this is a data set containing both the municipality of Copenhagen and of Frederiksberg. So if I only want to see those that are number one in Frederiksberg, I'll then go back and here I'll say that it has to be house number one and my municipality code, Comune code, has to be equal to, get all of them, and that's 147. So in this case, I now only get addresses in this little area, which is Frederiksberg. So here we see all the number ones of the streets in the municipality of Frederiksberg. So I combine the and and the or. If I've gone into the other tool, so I've instead of used the filter here, it said properties. And then down here, you can see I've, it's already there. And I get exactly the same dialog box. So there's no difference if you go into, uh, into the properties and then the provide fi feature filter, or you just do the filter at the right click of the layer up here. So if you do 
this one. It's exactly the same. So that was the filter tool. I better just clear my filter. So back with all of my addresses again.